All right, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andrew Sotterelli. I'm the product manager here at Entopology for Entop. And I'm here to show you a few of the new enhancements on top for uh, topology optimization. In particular, our new overhang constraint, we're gonna go through a couple different models you may be familiar with. First, we'll go through uh, the GE bracket. So this simple use case of applying the overhang constraint to uh, a single face. And then we're gonna move on to uh, what's also the uh, Alcoa bracket that folks are very familiar with for topology optimization problems. And we'll look at using the overhang constraint on multiple faces here. And so starting off first with uh, the GE bracket here, let's take a look at you know, what we would get using uh, our unconstrained uh, topology optimization. So we'll turn on the visibility here of this. And if we take a look at this model, uh, we can actually see there's a lot of regions of, of overhang here over what is probably going to be our, our manufacturing allowance of 45 degrees. And we can see that when we turn on the manufacturing support volumes, you can see a lot of region here needs to be supported. So one of the ways that we can enhance the design for uh, additive manufacturing here is by using this new overhang constraint. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. Um, so we're going to find the overhang constraint in our beta tab here. And just a reminder, if you want to turn on this feature, you can go to settings and then we'll use the show beta blocks option and you'll see the beta tab. And so all the way over here on the right hand side under topology optimization, there is this overhang uh, constraint block. And so we'll we can drop that into a tree. I've already spawned one. And so we can see it takes a few inputs here. It's going to take your build direction. So we allow you to freely define the orientation uh, that your, your part is going to build in. So for uh, typically for a powder bed fusion process, right, that's going to be in the Z direction upwards. Um, but maybe your parts at an angle like the part I have here, you can see it's off at an angle. So we're going to realign this um, at a different orientation. The next uh, input it provides here is a, a max angle, right? This is going to be driven by your manufacturing process. And the final one, this, this differentiates the end top uh, overhang constraint from some of the other tools you may be familiar with, uh, where it uses a uh, boundary support region. So you're actually able to, as the, the expert of your part, you're, you're going to be able to select the faces on your part where you know you're going to want to have support structures. And this allows the optimization algorithm to avoid certain faces while allowing supports to be generated on other faces. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at what I used here already with the GE bracket. So I just defined, in this case, the entirety of my bottom face. I said, you know what, with these bolt holes, I know I'm going to have to print this in this specific orientation, and I'm going to allow supports anywhere on this bottom face. All right, and so once we go ahead and define that, you know that's what drives our overhang constraint. So I went ahead and reran this with that new uh, overhang constraint in there. We can actually see the results are, are pretty different from what we saw before. So we can see actually regions in here through the middle section of the part. We're trying to get some of those Gothic arches uh, so that we're avoiding support structure generation. Actually, regions where it's actually going to connect down to the bottom of the part, um, generating you know, support for other regions of the part. And so we can actually take a look at the support structures here that would be required, right? And we can see actually pretty big reduction. Uh, let me just go ahead and we can turn it on the other one here. So we're going to go to display. Let me, let's turn this to red and turn on the view, right? We can see a lot of, a lot of red region here, and we've reduce that significantly with this new overhang constraint. So again, the nice part here is you're in full control of this process. You know best where your part can have supports. Maybe there's certain faces that are really functional. There's other ones you know you're going to have to machine afterwards. And so you're going to select those so that supports can be generated there. So let's take a look at a more complex model where we apply this overhang constraint to multiple uh, faces, multiple surfaces. So I've taken a, another very, again, familiar part. In this case, 
the Alcoa bracket. Um, and I've defined, let's, let's actually take a look at my unconstrained results here, right? So this is what I might get uh, out unconstrained. So no overhang constraint here. We can take a look at our support volumes, right? And we can see there's a lot of support structures that are gonna be needed uh, for this part. Now, I went ahead and actually defined a few different regions of my part where I knew I was gonna allow uh, for supports to be generated. So let's actually turn those on. Turn off the view of my model here. So we can see on the bottom face of that bracket, I know I'm gonna need supports there, especially if I, I orient it such that, you know, I, I don't wanna uh, have distortions in those holes. Uh, here, again, based on that orientation, I'm gonna need supports over there, as well as on the, the bottom little face of my model here. And so here I have the power to define those surfaces, those faces, those boundaries that I know I'm gonna need support structures and I want support structures and allow the algorithm to work around that and generate a part optimized for my specific conditions. So let's go ahead and take a look at what our outcome is here. So we can actually see um, the power of this, this algorithm. If we look at a few different points here, we can see these very sharp um, edges here where we're not creating uh, regions where we're gonna need a lot of supports, right? We're creating regions that abide by our overhang constraint. Now, you may say, uh, you know, this actually may introduce some uh, stress risers. Well, the nice thing is if you go back to our uh, topology optimization and we look at some of our optimization constraints, we do have a stress response. So you can go ahead, add that in as well and add in that additional level of uh, into the optimization routine. So in this case, we end up with a part that again, looks slightly different than our original one, removing material in certain regions to allow for self-supporting behavior. And now if we go ahead and take a look at the supports required here, we can see it's drastically reduced. So we know obviously in the regions around these, these bolt holes, these faces, we're gonna need support structures there. That's just how it is. But we've reduced in this uh, bulk region here in the middle, significantly the amount of support. So let's just go and take a look there. Right, and we can see in, in this entire middle region, we needed a lot of support structures without the overhang constraint. And now we've added that in and we can see we've substantially reduced uh, the amount that we need here, right? And so I think this really just goes to show the power of the, the overhang constraint now within our uh, topology optimization and, and topology, um, really giving you the, the, the expert, the control over the process so that you can design the part exactly the way you want. Um, whereas other tools may you know, choose for you, you're given that full control um, to make that determination of where support structures need to be. So uh, that's all for today, folks, in terms of uh, the overhang constraint. I'm really excited uh, for some of the other things you can expect to see in end topology and the, the coming months with regard to topology optimization, simulation, uh, and other areas of, of the product. Thanks for watching and take care.